Hello. Um, last uh, drawing on this channel was uh, a bit complex and it took me ages to edit the video. Uh, right now I'm doing something uh, very quick. So I thought uh, it would be a, a good idea to film it because uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be a particularly interesting video, but uh, it's going to be shorter, so... Anyway, uh, we're drawing Doctor Who fan art. Uh, surprisingly, uh, it's not uh, it's Doctor Adventures fan, fan art. I've been reading more of them uh, recently, uh, and uh, as a result, uh, I'm kind of obsessed again with them. Surprisingly enough, that's not what's going on here. This is 13 fan art. And that's for a really stupid reason. Judge for yourselves. A not very good band I kind of like, called Enter Shikari, just released a song called The Void Stares Back. And uh, <laughs> there's lyrics in it just screaming a 13 to me. It goes, I'm the child with the telescope eyes. I can see all over space and time. <laughs> dimension I'm from another dimension and where I where I come from there's no way I'm the only one so um, <laughs> this is giving me a major major timeless child vibes and uh, yeah I I'm drawing something about it so when you put your arms like that oh I made a mistake uh, yeah the the thumb th should be here, not on the other side. I'm the child with the telescope eyes. I can see all of the space and time. So I'm putting her goggles, the ones we, we see from time to time when she's tinkering. The 13 era is going to be over very soon, and um, I'm in two minds about it. A lot of my friends really hated it or at the very least thought it was mostly mediocre. Honestly, I I kind of see where they're coming from. Compared to them, I, I look like a, a chibnall fanboy but of sorts. But I, I'm not particularly fond of, of this era. It had some very interesting ideas, just not always uh, executed very strongly. I'm especially frustrated about Flux. Uh, the main idea is incredible. Uh, the the whole thing about a fight to the death between time and space as concepts, uh, the universe uh, being being uh, space and the flux being time, and that's a very strong concept. But it wasn't executed very strongly, especially the the ending, and um, it was very rushed. A lot of plot lines uh, weren't particularly interesting, uh, and I think if you cut one or two plot lines in it, and maybe uh, recenter it around the whole uh, time versus space thing, and uh, give more things to do to the companions, maybe change the resolution a bit. I think it could have been extremely good, but uh, it is what it is, and it's not particularly good right now. Uh, it has very good elements, but as it is in its current form, it's very frustrating. Which is sad, which is very sad. I realize I don't have much to say about uh, Flux. And I mostly said my thing. Oh, uh, yeah, there's something very funny about uh, a detail in Flux. I'm not sure uh, you're all aware of that. The, that thing uh, Swarm and Azure are uh, carrying around that... That thing called... Uh, I think it was called the Passenger. The mask is just a <laughs> regular... Mask you can buy on eBay, and 
<laughs> it's not just, it's not a prop made for the show or anything, and it's not even particularly well hidden. It's not hidden at all, in fact. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I thought it was funny. Yeah, in, obviously in the song there's a whole uh, staring to the void and the void stares back thing. To paraphrase uh, Cecil from Night Vale, I stared into the void and the void blinked first. <laughs> the actual uh, Night Vale quote is, uh, it's burnt into my mind because it's so good. Uh, it's, we did not crumble, we did not back down, we stood eye to eye with violence, and it blinked first. <laughs> Friendly reminder to, to, to check out uh, Welcome to Night Vale if for some reason you've never listened to it, uh, and if you've ever listened to it and uh, stopped, they are still uh, making episodes, uh, it's still very good. But uh, the audience has dwindled to something like 10,000 views uh, per episode, which is very sad. Uh, so if you like the show, uh, please uh, remember to, to check out their latest stuff. The Doctor Who book I'm books, actually, I'm currently re reading. Uh, arguably, one of them is not exactly a Doctor Who book, it's a Bernie Summerfield book, but it's it's in the Doctor Who universe, so... Uh, so, I'm uh, reading a couple of Bernie Summerfield books I, I got ages ago uh, in a clearance sale uh, on Big Finish back when I was still uh, buying stuff from Big Finish. Uh, uh, last, last two times I, I've purchased something uh, physical from them, it never arrived, despite uh, tr everything I tried with them, and so I stopped uh, getting stuff from them. Back when I was depressed, they did a huge clearance sale on uh, a lot of things, including books. And uh, I got some books for next to nothing at that point. But I'm only reading them now because they had been sitting in a huge, huge pile of books I was planning to read, but I was too depressed to, to read books because uh, depression uh, renders you nearly incapable of doing everything you like. And for me that was uh, reading Doctor Who and listening to audios, uh, among other things. Sadly, but I'm finally reading them, and I'm also uh, reading the EDAs again, uh, the Eighth Doctor Adventures again. Uh, I've been slowly trying to go back to them, and I'm currently reading uh, Camera Obscura, uh, which gives me a lot of pressure because it's from a, an author I really like. Admittedly, I've only read uh, two slash listened two things from her. They've both been 10 out of 10s, so uh, I was very uh, scared to be disappointed by one of her things eventually, so I was dragging my feet a bit to read Camera Obscura, especially considering a lot of friends wanted me to read it, and I didn't know if it was because it was good or because it was bad. <laughs> and uh, turns out it's because it's really good. Uh, I'm like uh, a third of the way through, and it's... It's incredible so far. The themes are like designed to resonate with me. I was going to say it's awful, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it kind of hurts. It's uh, mostly about identity and stuff. Also, uh, there's this nagging feeling at the back of my head that Lloyd Rose hates me personally due to uh, an old thing that happened uh, between uh, me, her, and, and Kate Orman. Uh, bear with me here. Uh, <laughs> only on Tumblr.com. <laughs> so, um, 
if you if you didn't know, uh, Kate Orman is on is on or, or was. I'm not sure she is even posting a lot anymore. But she she at the very least she was on Tumblr a couple of years back. Uh, she stumbled upon my Kadroya uh, fan comic, based on of course uh, Lloyd Rose's uh, Kadroya. Oh, I don't know if she sent it to Lloyd Rose or if Lloyd Rose sent it to her. I, I'm not entirely sure about that. But uh, the crux of the thing is Kate Orman sent me an email asking if I could send the originals to Lloyd Rose. Uh, the thing is, uh, you know how my sketchbooks are made. I always use both th sides of the paper all the time. And um, some of these pages, uh, the Keadroya comic, were was drawn on, uh, had personal stuff. Some others had uh, commissions from other people, and I was like, I, I can't uh, cut the pages to send them to her, even if I I, I really I'd really like to, but I, I can't because. Uh, there's stuff on the other side of some pages, and uh, I, I just can't. And uh, I expected, uh, I don't know, uh, some talk about it, or... And I was like, maybe... I, I can't print them on good paper uh, and send them to her for free. If, if she wants me to, I, I can do that. And uh, Kate Orman basically ghosted me. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm not sure if it's because uh, she wanted to ghost me or Lloyd, Lloyd Rose at the other side of the chain of emails wanted to ghost me. I'm still not sure what happened. But um, if, you're, if you were wondering why I never finished the Kerdroya comic, uh, that's why. That's because I'm pretty sure uh, Lloyd Rose hates my guts. <laughs> Despite the fact I absolutely love her stuff. And uh, that's it. That's <laughs> send tweets. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's also why I'm, I'm uncomfortable about uh, saying I like her stuff because she, she doesn't like me. Maybe she forgot all about this, uh, but I didn't. And. Um, <laughs> Sometimes uh, on a on a Discord or something, uh, I'm an admin of. Uh, there's going to be a guy going, uh, yeah, uh, Johannes hates me for this and that. I read the username and I'm like, who the fuck are you? I have no, no idea who you are. I have no idea what you did. Why do you think I hate you? I don't remember this at all. And. Um, but they remember it very vividly. <laughs> like maybe they said one th one dumb thing once and I corrected them once. Or maybe they made one typo and I corrected them once. And they think I I have a thing against them personally uh, since then, even though I forgot it instantly. I don't know. That's that's maybe the case here with, uh, with Kate Orman and Lloyd Rose, but... If you're wondering what this thing is, it's uh, I th just thought it would be pretty in the frame. It's uh, a notebook uh, where I'm uh, working on something I'm currently writing, and I'm there's notes and stuff and uh, research and uh, drawings in it. I'm not gonna show it to you because I. I'm mostly trying to keep the thing I'm writing under wraps for now. Okay, re real quick. We are going to use this. This used to be a, a brush I used back when I was briefly trying to learn uh, Chinese painting techniques traditional ones. It was ages ago, I was maybe 12. This was the only brush I had for this. It wasn't a very good one, but uh, as you can see, it's very handy to to make a quick 
little layers of uh, watercolor and uh, ink. The only problem is it retains a lot of water, so you have to to work on very thick paper with it. Your body is listening. Yeah, I'm listening to the song I was talking about earlier. I don't know why currently I'm very into this uh, blue versus red uh, contrast. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, all my current uh, drawings use it. Not sure it's still going to look like that uh, after I use inks, but um, I, I have uh, contrasts I really like from time to time from a Specific during a specific period, like um, at some point I was very, I was completely obsessed with the purple plus plus orange contrast. Recently, it's been uh, a neon neon pink versus neon blue. Currently, it's uh, it's this uh, soft blue versus soft red, like in this one, and. Uh, in this one. I don't know why. But yeah. We we'll see if it stayed that way. Okay, so now as you notice I have a lot of inks here. And I'm going to use a smaller brush and not the one uh, that retains a lot of water when we use it because otherwise I'm going to destroy poor Fitz who's on the other side of the paper. One thing I, I've been doing uh, for a year or so, a bit more actually, is uh, translating uh, songs on uh, a website called uh, Lyrics Translate, I don't know if you know about it. And uh, basically as soon as there's a, a song that drops like this that I obsess over, one of the first thing I, I do is Go to Lyric Translate, add the song and the lyrics, and then translate it to to French if it's in English and to English if it's in French. Thankfully, um, you don't have to keep the rhymes or stuff when you translate them. That could be funny. I, I tried to do so when whenever I could uh, for a few songs. Some parts of the search by NF I tried to make a uh, rhyme, some parts I couldn't. It's way more difficult when you try to keep the rhymes. Next we have blood red. Just gonna add a paper here. When I really like a song, uh, regardless of how bad it actually is, uh, I'm, I'm going to listen to it on the loop for days, and this is also the case with this one. The, the funny thing uh, with my tasty music is I, I try to listen to a lot of things, I, uh, but in the end, despite Despite all my musical curiosity of sorts, uh, my, my, my taste is still consistently terrible. <laughs> like, I, I like uh, overproduced uh, garbage and uh, things where there's a lot of bleeps and bloops and, and noise everywhere. And, and might be because uh, I, I, because uh, it's more interesting to look at, and as you know, I, I, I see music, but uh, I don't know. It's like uh, 
if you offered me if I was a toddler and you offered me a, a really really cool toy and I but it didn't make enough uh, noise and lights and stuff and I, I really really wanted uh, the keys someone is dangling in front of me <laughs> instead I'm gonna add also a couple of normal red spots um, meow. gonna use uh, some purple and some uh, china blue because I am what I am and uh, meow. and wouldn't it wouldn't be uh, Johannes uh, drawing without china blue I nearly said she'd post uh, it's I mean it's an illustration and uh, meow. and I'm working on it seriously but uh, the idea itself, uh, the fact that it's based on a, on a somewhat ridiculous song, it kind of makes it a, a shitpost in a way. What do you want? China blue. Oops. It's okay. I'm not talking much because uh, I don't know what what to say at this point. But I tend to keep only uh, parts where I explain stuff or talk about stuff. And yellow. This video is uh, sponsored by my cat. I couldn't do anything without him, as you can hear. I, I fear I I'll never have uh, enough uh, watchers to be able to stream ever. Or maybe I should just uh, wait until I have uh, paid my apartment back and after that maybe buy a and a better computer so I can stream otherwise I have to use my my phone for that and uh, you can't stream with your phone unless you have like a thousand people following you and I'm barely I'm still not uh, at uh, 200 if I record so I don't feel like sleeping yet so. Might as well finish this. Uh, currently I have a, a somewhat good lamp. So. You know the, the funniest part about this is I have no idea where I'm going with this. Uh, I just want to do something cool based on the music I'm listening to and that's it. There's a fundamental uh, difference of perception uh, between me and most of my friends concerning the the timeless child, uh, the vast majority of them view view that story as a chosen one story, and I don't like at all. They they argue uh, mainly that the doctor uh, has been effectively made into a a chosen one by this uh, timeless child. Uh, point and uh, I don't think that's the case um, if we speak purely in tropes uh, they see it purely as a chosen one narrative while I see it purely as a uh, powered by a forsaken child narrative the the doctor has zero agency in this story in, in the timeless child story I mean the thing is, uh, in a chosen one story, the cho said chosen one is supposed to do something to make things better, like, uh, oh, chosen one, go slay the dragon, 
defeat the Dark Lord, save the village, accomplish the prophecy or something. That's not the case here, like at all. The Time Lords completely hid that for a start. They didn't want uh, anyone to know about this. There is no prophecy. There is no. It's the opposite of a prophecy. It's, it was buried in the archives so deeply that only the master, effectively hacking the m collective memory of the Time Lords, was able to find this. And even even then, it's clearly fragmentary. Bits have been edited out and stuff. So, like, it's the opposite of a prophecy. No, nobody knows about this. Uh, everything has been erased and forgotten. And it's also the opposite of uh, you're the hero uh, doing something cool. Or you're the hero who's gonna save us all. It's like, we need your... your power to do this thing, we're gonna make sure you, you don't remember that because it doesn't suit our needs. You are not important. The, the, the power you have is important to us. You as a person, you're, you're worth nothing. Your, your value is zero in this equation. You're only valuable uh, because of this special thing you have and we are going to tap that indefinitely uh, without your consent and uh, to power ourselves and make us special and make us the chosen ones and you are going to be discarded after that you you, you can of course you can become a, a cog in the of the new system we are going to build uh, thanks to the things we stole from you. Uh, you're not the hero. You're, you didn't do anything. You had no agency in this story. Several friends spent ages, and I mean it, ages, trying to convince me this was bad. This was making uh, Doctor Who into a chosen one story. And as I just said, I think it's... The literal opposite of that and I can't, can't think I, I, I can do anything to convince them of my point of view that just keep stating I'm wrong and and that uh, I don't understand stuff or saying I'm seeing stuff that is not in the text which is no everything I said is the text Liter it's literally what's in the timeless children that's the, the entire purpose of the, the very, very, very long flashback. If anything, the master is trying to turn this into some kind of chosen one story. But uh, as the doctor uh, herself states, as in the fugitive doctor, wh where she comes from doesn't change a thing to what she chose to be. That was a very important part of the episode, and uh, I think a lot of people tend to forget that. I'm not talking about my friends, but uh, I mean a lot of people criticizing this episode. This is how I draw lightning, by the way. You draw uh, some somewhat chaotic lines. They don't always connect. And you add uh, bits of light along the way after a while. You can blur some parts of the lights. This is all very ridiculous. and <laughs> But it's fitting perfectly the vibe I'm trying to achieve aka a very pretentious, uh, somewhat 80s or 90s album cover. <laughs> Have you ever seen the covers of the Asia records? That's so tacky and I love it. 
Like it's the kind of stuff you would paint on a van. That's what I'm talking about, by the way. <laughs> I thought it would be funnier to show you the vinyls instead of just putting a picture in the corner. By now, you're, most of you are fully aware I, of how much I love somewhat cringe stuff. Ridiculous album covers, absolutely. It's already pretty nice. I'm not sure I need to do much more. I'm mostly following the the shapes already drawn by the ink. Uh, add a little line. Yeah, like this. Okay, so I'm gonna use white paint. Put a bit of it across the sides. I feel like Bob Ross right now. And um, cover the parts you don't want to. to damage, remove the stuff that could be damaged, and just flick it. Yeah. That's very, very uh, speed paint-like, if you've seen someone uh, speed painting a thing. Uh, in the video uh, with with paint bombs and stuff, it's the kind of stuff they do. Is this pure chaos? Absolutely. There you go. I think that's fine. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to do the final line art uh, after that, and uh, I think we'll be good to go. I think this is one of my shorter videos on, the, on this uh, channel. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, also leave a comment, because uh, I need those. Uh, I hope you'll have a great day, and i uh, see you later.